You can't control the volatility of the stock market, but you can surely control the volatility of your actions. Okay, I didn't author this quote, so please don't quote me on that. But what's definitely true is that the ups and downs of the market leads to a lot of investor indecision. I'm sure it's happened to you as well. And one tool that can pull you out of that mental block is the Relative Strength Index or RSI. Kunal, who researched for this video, calls it the secret keepers of market sentiment, like the Priory of Cyan or the Priory of Kunal. And in this video, our own Robert Langdon of Technical Analysis will help us understand what RSI is and how it can be used to analyze and assess the momentum and strength of price movements. Let's begin. All right, let's start from the top and it was in the year 1978 when this concept of relative strength index was introduced by an American mechanical engineer named J. Welles Wilder. Mr. Wilder presented it as a momentum oscillator that measures the velocity and magnitude of price movements and although what I said sounded really complicated, all it means is that through the RSI we now have a signal that tells investors when a stock is overbought and when it is oversold. In RSI terms, if this number is above 70, then the stock is considered to be overbought, which means an investor can consider selling it and when the RSI is below 30, then it's an oversold situation which can then be interpreted as a buying signal. So as a range, the RSI oscillates between 0 and 100. And in addition to giving buy and sell signals, this technical indicator also identifies stocks that are ready for a trend reversal or a corrective pullback in price. Now, the key phrase in RSI is, of course, relative strength, and it's called so because the strength or weakness of a stock is based on its own performance, and this indicator does not compare one stock to another or to the overall market. Actually, you know what? Let's identify some stocks, and as usual, I'll use the screener to filter some buying opportunities, that is, stocks where the RSI is less than 30. And as you see here, this list of 150 plus companies as of today includes Asian Paints, LIC, Tech Mahindra, Bandhan Bank, Vinati Organics, and many more. In fact, Asian Paints is interesting because the stock was in an overbought zone in the last week of July. And more recently, just a week back, it was at an RSI of 21, which is an oversold zone. So a buying signal, and this of course happened because the stock has lost 15% in value in the last three months. But these are just statistics, right? I mean, how do we really know this is helping? And to convince myself, I simulated data over a three year period with the explicit intention of buying 100 shares of Asian Pains when the RSI goes below 30, and I would sell 100 shares when the RSI first hits the 70 number. So I started on the 1st of November 2020 with an initial corpus of 1000 shares and at different points in time, I adjusted the buying and selling volumes based on shares in hand before exiting my position on the 31st of October this year. Now this simulation where I bought when the RSI is low and sold when the number is high yielded me an analyzed return of 13.7% which was a good 3% alpha over a simple buy and hold strategy. All right, now that we know this is useful and profitable, let's get into it a bit and understand how RSI is calculated. So this is a fairly simple formula. And as is the case with any price movement based indicator, we are looking for upward or downward change in prices. In fact, it's probably better to understand this with an example. And if I want to calculate the 14 day RSI for HDFC Bank Limited, here's how I will go about it. Step one is to map HDFC Bank's closing stock price for the past 14 days and I've taken the most recent October data for this examination. Step two requires us to calculate the percentage change which can be in the upward or downward direction. Step three is to isolate the occasions on which the stock made a gain and the days on which there was a loss. The next step, step four, is to sum up the percentage movement across the gain and loss days and to divide it by 14, which for HDFC Bank comes to a 14-day average gain of 0.31 and a 14-day average loss of 0.55. And finally, step five is where we apply these two numbers to our RSI formula, and this gives us a 14-day RSI of 36.5 as of 31st of October. Now this exercise can be done for every trading day which will give us a chart like this and 36.5 means that the stock is inching very close to the oversold zone making it a buying opportunity. 
So essentially, RSI can never be negative, and this number vacillates between 0 and 100 at all times. If the RSI is calculated as 0, then it means the stock price has fallen on all 14 days, and as one might have guessed, a 100 RSI means 14 continuous days of upward price movement, which is definitely a case of overbuying, and potentially a stock price correction is just around the corner. Of course, both these situations, that is 0 and 100, are pretty rare. And although the 30-70 is the most common combination, some of the more experienced traders and investors do change this number to suit their style of investing. The same goes for the 14-day window, and while 14 is what Mr. Wilder used, different practitioners are known to tweak this as well with 9-day and 25-day RSI also gaining popularity. Now, just like RSI acts as a green light, red light signal for stocks, the same principle can be applied on the broader indices as well. For example, Kunal did this backtesting on the Nifty 50 from the year 2017 until 2023, and he arrived at 28 occasions when the Nifty 50 had gone into an overbought or an oversold zone. More precisely, there were 22 intrusions into the overbought zone, that is, the RSI went over the 70 mark and there were only 6 occasions, which led to a buying opportunity with the latest one coming just last week on the 26th of October. Okay, so until now, we've learned the basics of what is an RSI, its significance, how it is calculated, and how it can be used as a filter to identifying buying or selling opportunities. Now, when we did the formula part earlier in the video, you might have noticed that the RSI is a lagging indicator. That is, it uses historical data of the past 14 days to give us a potential buy or sell signal. And as a standard procedure, we, or at least I, would start buying when the RSI first goes below 30 and sell when the RSI first goes above the 70 mark. Now the question is, how does one handle a situation when the stock continues to go up even after entering the overbought zone or continues its downward march after it has entered the oversold zone? For example, here's the daily chart of Bajaj Auto Limited for the months of April and May. And notice it was on the 6th of April when the stock crossed its 30 RSI mark. Now procedurally, this is the time when one should exit the stock. But in this case, the price of Bajaj Auto continued to go up and by the time the RSI dipped below 70, it was the middle of May and the stock had risen by a good 12.5% by then. So 12.5 is a big jump and to deal with such situations, Wilder introduced another concept called the failure swings of RSI, which basically says instead of selling a stock when it enters the overbought zone, one should rather wait and exit only when the RSI cuts the 70 mark from the top, as it did in the case of Bajaj Auto on the 16th of May. Similarly, one should not buy a stock when it has just entered the zone of overselling, that is RSI less than 30, and one should rather wait for the RSI to breach the 30 mark from below and then invest. This was seen with the stock of Dalmia Bharat Limited in July of this year, when after it pierced the 30 RSI, the stock price continued to fall by an additional 6% before it again breached the 30 mark, but this time it happened from the bottom. So to improve the probability of not missing out on some big price movement, always use this simple strategy tweak of waiting for the RSI to run its entire cycle. Okay, so if you're with me until now, then this last section is where we take things a little higher up the food chain as we study the concept of RSI divergence. Let's start by taking a look at this Nifty 50 chart, and it's very noticeable that the index and its RSI generally move in the same direction. However, there are times when the stock price and its RSI are not moving in sync, and this is what we technically refer to as a divergence. To put it simply, divergence means a difference in opinion or interest, which is exactly what's happening when the price and the RSI are moving in an opposite direction. In fact, RSI divergence can be of two types. The first is when the price moves up and the RSI is moving down. And this is called a bearish divergence because if the stock price is losing its strength, then it's only a matter of time for the price to follow suit and it too will start moving downwards. For example, look at this Reliance Industries chart from the 13th of March 2019 until the 3rd of May. And one would notice that the stock price of Reliance and the RSI are moving in an opposite direction. This means the price was at a weakening stage and it eventually came down post the 3rd of May. The second type is called the bullish RSI divergence and as you might have expected, it means the price is going down at the same time when the RSI is going up. 
Case in point is again Reliance Industries from the 23rd of November 2021 until the 20th of December when we witnessed a bullish divergence and because the price was gaining strength all this while we eventually saw a move up in prices post the 20th of December. So these were a couple of incremental RSI strategies we wanted to put forth in this video for you. But I hope you can now understand and appreciate why RSI, the Relative Strength Index, is called the secret keepers of market sentiment and how you as an investor can take advantage of it. I sincerely hope you found this video informative and useful. And if yes, then please consider tapping the like button, sharing this video with your friends, Telling your friends to subscribe to my newsletter, the link is there in the video's description and I'll see you three days from now. Until then.